um, because I have a, <coughs> an unhealthy um, fear of moths. And it's actually quite, um, it's not good. It's, it's really, um, like I'll freeze, like I'll a full panic, um, anxiety attack, panic attack, the whole, just if a moth flies in my room and it comes near me, I'll just like, I just freak out. So it's live moths we're talking about. Yeah, the ones that are fluttering around near me, yeah. So if they're dead, that's okay. You could pick them up or dispose of them? Um, I could burn them. I don't know if I could actually pick one up, but... The reason why I ask is because I had a participant on one of the courses who was so afraid of moths that even when they were dead... She would describe them in great detail and how ugly they were and their thick, fat bodies and things. And, of course, so different to butterflies. But she didn't even like butterflies because they reminded her of moths. How are you with butterflies? Butterflies are beautiful and amazing. Yeah. Okay. Moths are disgusting and they need to be rid of the planet. Okay. And I, I know what caused it. Um... When I was a kid, we were camping, which we often did, and my dad called me over to this tree. So, being a good child, I went to the tree, and I'm looking at the tree, and everyone's looking at the tree, and it's a tree. And then my dad whacked the trunk with a stick, and this, like, four or five inch moth flew off the tree and hit me in the face, and then fluttered off. And ever since then, I've been moth afraid. How old were you? Under 10. Mm -hmm. Probably five to seven in that range. And so the thought of a moth doing that to you now provokes a panic attack. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just getting the logic of it because you yourself called it unhealthy. Well, when I, uh, I I'm a grown man who can do lots of things. <coughs> when I'm sitting in my chair and a moth lands on my laptop, I freeze and have to call for my son to come save me. It's a, uh, it's not healthy. I shouldn't <coughs> be smiling. I shouldn't be smiling. But my my father was so frightened of spiders. And he lived in, um, and still does, in an old barn conversion where all the right. all the walls are perfectly plastered apart from the beams, and it's all magnolia. And every so often, you see a burn mark on the wall, <laughs> and it's where he's got a can of hairspray and a lighter, and when he sees a spider, he. <laughs> He burns them alive and their ashened bodies are on the wall because that makes him feel powerful and he's, he doesn't want to admit that he's scared of spiders but that is got these burn marks all over the place because <laughs> you See, said you could burn them it reminds yeah, oh yeah. me <clears throat> no I, I love spiders because they eat moths yeah so going back to the logic side so that mm -hmm. we can perhaps determine which we need to before we do any kind of phobia processing. That it's an irrational fear. Mm -hmm. um, if one were to fly in your face right now, mm, on a scale of 0 to 10, <laughs> 10 being the worst fear ever, where do you feel that scale is where are you settling on where would the point to be on the scale of naught to ten ten's the worst fear imaginable Me probably seven or eight yeah okay mm -hmm. and this is wonderful because it shows just how powerful your mind is because it's not happening tell that to my heart rate right now <laughs> <clears throat> 
Well, this is where it's a brilliant explanation of the difference between the conscious and the unconscious mind. Because consciously, grown up you knows that in your environment there is no moth. Mm -hmm. Have a good look around if you don't believe me. Mm -hmm. So your conscious mind, which is the boss, which is in charge, knows in your environment at the moment it is moth free. Mm -hmm. So interesting that I got my flashcards. I must be getting psychic, must be catching it off, Teresa. <laughs> um, your behaviour in a moth-free environment is irrational, is it not? Mm -hmm. This isn't me telling you off. This is me determining and you having a conversation, if you like, with your unconscious mind saying, why would you be behaving like that? How would... Why would my heart be racing and what, what else happens to you? As I know you've come down a little bit now from your seven or an eight. What happens to you at seven or eight of fear? What, what were you experiencing in your body? Um, it's, a, it's a general shutdown. Like I basically, I freeze. Right. Um, yeah, my knees lock. I just, I, I can't think rationally so you go into a state of being unable you have an inability to deal with things mm -hmm. all of your skills and abilities for say dealing with a snake could you deal with a snake oh yeah no problem okay so your skill and your ability of dealing with a snake your snake like ability is completely gone when it comes to moths mm-hmm so the, not the moth, the idea of the moth, because if you can get yourself into a, a fearful state without one actually being present in your environment, if you can behave that way when there isn't one there, mm -hmm. then when your ability goes out the window, then <laughs> enjoying this then it's your belief and your attitude towards said creature that is causing that behaviour which stops your ability to deal with just one element in your environment. So this is where we're at. And we understand that that belief and your attitude towards these creatures has been installed at an early age, which is mm -hmm. how most phobias begin. But now you sit there in front of me as a moth-fearing person, a person mm -hmm. who hates moths. It's gone to the identity level. Jenny, I'll hold my hands up and say, I am somebody that hates these creatures and they should no longer be al allowed to be part of the universe. If yeah. we could get everyone to agree, and that would be awesome. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen, mate, is it? <laughs> in a fantasy, in your own mind, if you want to um, do the screenplay, screenplay for a, a film, we could have eradicated them. <coughs> but no, it's not going to happen, is it? Unless you believe that it might. Maybe we could release a virus that just attacks big bad moths or even itty bitty moths. All of them. So your environment at the moment is dictating how you behave mm -hmm. and it stops your skills and abilities and it's attacked your belief and attitudes about life and it's gone to the identity level and you can't really see any good purpose behind them sharing your planet you can for the spiders because they eat the damn moths mm -hmm. 
What are we going to do about it then? What do you want to do? Um, I don't want to like them. No, I, can't, I haven't got that power. But I don't want to just like f- full on freeze. Okay. Like I've broken down crying because there was a moth near me. Like it's just cold sweats, heart racing. Like I had one touch my leg a few days ago and that's what it was just, it was horrific. And of course, every, everyone thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. Mm. You know, Teresa's is trying very hard not to laugh. The children are just laughing at me. Um, and I'm not helping. And I'm, I'm, Oh no, it's funny. Like it's, it's, it's comical that somebody of my size and the something the size of a moth touched my leg and I'm completely destroyed. I, I mean, I've been punched in the face at a bar and didn't react whatsoever. And then I get touched in the leg by a moth and I'm standing there shaking, crying, um, sweating. Um, so being not, not sure what to do. Cause I don't know where it is. So I can't <laughs> move. I didn't know where it went. That's part of it. You know, like it, it's, it's from outside. It's comical from inside. It's not. Horrific. Yeah. And I'm I'm not offended when, when people think it's funny because it's, it's, you know, I've seen people afraid of spiders and I think it's quite comical because especially here, there's no spiders that can hurt you and they're so tiny. Right. But, um, and and what's the, um, similarity dare I say now I know that they don't sting you there, that they can't hurt you. Not like in Australia, where it's the, yeah, no. it's the little red backs that get you in Australia. Oh. They they hide under the visor of your car. Yeah. So you pull the visor down as you're driving along and, ah, red back on your lap. It's not the big ones. The huntsmen's are great. They don't actually hurt you. But yeah. the, the little red backs. <laughs> and, you know, ticks. How are you with ticks? Ticks are fine. I oh, had some tiny little ticks in roads. Because the the mother ones had babies, and have you seen one close up? Even mm-hmm. the tiny ones, they got these jaws that come out like that, and they the jaws dig into the person or the animal and yeah. latch on, and then you only really see them the tiny ones when they're filled up with blood because they go like a whitish grey. Yeah. Yeah. So they had lots of those. And I yeah, think and they could they get like 10 times bigger than their size yeah when they're, when they're full yeah and um when they're when they're really full they fall off <clears throat> so if you wait for the for the dog to be bled by the offending creatures i find them offensive they'll just fall off because they've had the fall and they they hide they don't think they're hiding i do they they hide on vegetation and they sense when a warm blooded creature is passing like a goat and then they mm-hmm. pounce with the jaws and vicious little things and nobody seems to be offended by them and the reason why I'm not scared of them is because I had to deal with them so much to begin with it's like what horrible can't get them out with the tweezers you got to twist them and and if if they're full they'll burst instead of you being able to oh, and you got to make sure you get the head out, otherwise you'll get an infection. Yep. I had one in my armpit. Eh. Try to get one out of yourself when it's in your armpit. Ooh. It's one thing being on your dog, but when they're on your person as well. Yeah. So I'm telling you all of this because what can a moth do? What's the worst I thing a moth can do to you? Can touch me. Yes. In what way touch? Because, like you say, you've been punched in the face. So, in what way? Just, just any kind of, just any kind of touching. 
So Would the the just... worst, the worst, the worst thing a moth can do mm -hmm. is what? Burn my house down. A moth could burn your house down. Now I'm scared. Yes, because when it touches me and I get the can of hairspray oh. and I burn the moth and then it flies around and lands on the curtain. So you do the same thing as my dad with the hairspray? I, I very much could, yes. <laughs> I hope I haven't given you the idea to do that. No, no, no. But I've, yeah. Oh, we've I, really got to get this sorted now then, because those curtains look quite flammable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So, um, I had people terrified of cardboard, cotton wool, buttons. Buttons is a big one. And I've had moths. And a lady that was scared of moths, and you're very amiable, you're very polite about this and jovial about it, and and maybe because you're a bloke, because the the women that I've had with it, I'm thinking of one woman in particular, oh my goodness, as happens with many people with phobias, they they usually ask me to do something about them, and then they really turn against me. You're not coming anywhere, and I think I've got one of these creatures on my person. One lady, you'll see on a, a video on YouTube, she thought I'd got a drawer full of all sorts of different creatures, and I could pick one out <laughs> and wave it at them to make sure that they were over their phobia. So it's very common for someone, and it's usually a childhood thing, to be viscerally as in the body they say the body your body is your unconscious mind so you've kind of got cellular memory of a very traumatic event whereas your mind so I'm not even going to say that this is conscious and unconscious I'm going to say that this is enmeshed in every cell of your body because your body has memory and you'll be flinching and what what do you do take, take me through the process if you even think that there might be a moth in your room right now what do you do what's your behavior i basically freeze and call for help what if there's nobody to help Everybody's out. I uh, would probably just wait for it to leave. So you freeze. Mm -hmm. And you stay in that chair until you hoped it would leave. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know they don't. Mm -hmm. You know about moths? I might try to shoo it away. But that's like a last resort because I might actually touch it. <clears throat> so you're a wafter. Mm -hmm. You're either a, a freezer or a wafter. You're a wafter. You're a big old wafter. And you just weren't going to tell me, were you? Mm. <laughs> you're a wafter. A moth wafter. And you might probably use something to waft it with so that you don't have to touch it. Possibly. Yeah, because wafting your hands about might mean that you touch it. Do you know what they go for? Light. Yeah. So, clever man that you are, what would you do to attract it somewhere else other than you? What could you do? i tell you why I'm asking you this, because often fear stops people from thinking and the best way for you to think about this thing now now that you're allowing me thank you very much to help you with a strategy whilst you can think now without there being one in your environment there isn't one there so this is the idea of it this is the idea of it this is your belief so I'm addressing your belief 
at the moment. <clears throat> Nobody probably has given you a strategy because the fear has blocked it out. And if anybody tried to, you would probably be in the moment where they'd tell you to do it. Put a light on, go in another room, turn the light off, put a lamp on. It'll go towards the light. You probably wouldn't, that wouldn't go in at that time because you'd be free, freezing. You just mm -hmm. want it gone, don't you? So what does Ethan or Alex do when you say you call for help? What do they do? They just get rid of it. How? Other just by swatting it or hitting it with something, just sweeping it away. They sweep it away. Mm -hmm. And do you need to see that it's gone? Do you need proof? No, I trust them when they say it's gone. Oh, they good. think it. They think it's funny, but they know it's like it's not a joke. They love you very much. Yeah, like they wouldn't. They wouldn't tell me it was gone and then have it there. Have you ever lived on your own? No. So there's always been somebody to help? Yeah. So this is a mind exercise. Mm -hmm. If you did live on your own, if you had to work away for a week or so, and with an outside toilet, that's the best place to get moths. You have to use the outside toilet and you have to put a light on to use it, of course. Or your phone. If it's dark, if you went camping. <coughs> oh, camping! You must have had them camping. Or do you have those mm. special lights so that they don't attract insects? No, not usually. So you don't attract them when you're camping? <clears throat> I don't um, use the bathroom in the dark when we're camping. Here we are. You see me digging. Dig, 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 dig. So, that's uncomfortable, isn't it? No, I'll pee outside. I just won't pee in the toilet. Oh, okay. Oh, because you're a man. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All the advantages you guys have. So, it's no problem. Minor inconvenience, maybe. Right. Perhaps even more pleasant, not having to walk to the services um what's going to be better about life when this has gone i don't know it's not something that comes up daily mm. it's um just when it comes up it comes up mm. hard you know what i mean like, I don't have a moth in my room or near me every single day. But when it does happen, it's harsh. It sounds like you don't need to because I can just talk about them and you'll go up to a seven or an eight of fear. Well, you said it was touching my face. That wasn't very nice. I didn't say it was touching your face. You made that bit up. I might have. You definitely made that bit up. I wouldn't be that cruel. I'm cruel, but I'm not that cruel. I said, if one was in the room with you. Mm. But you told me how it was installed and mm. the very idea that, <clears throat> we call it crossing modalities, that you've crossed that over, means I made one suggestion and you made it a lot worse in your mind. And we do that to protect ourselves. We exaggerate things in order to protect ourselves, strangely. And you're imagining your belief system is doing what it's doing to protect you without one actually being there mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the reason why I've asked how valuable it would be to get rid of is is it worth doing anything about Yes, to the point where I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to love them. You won't just, love them. I just don't want to care about them. So at the moment you care about them? 
to the point where I need to know where they are and I need to know what they're thinking. And I need them to understand that if they come near me, they will die. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Where, like, spiders, I don't think about spiders. I don't care about spiders in the sense that if it's here, it's here for a reason. Mm -hmm. Big spiders mean that they've been doing a really good job eating what they've been supposed to eat. So they don't, they don't matter. Like they don't, they're just, they're spiders. They don't, I see them. I don't think about them where, you know, I mean, I could have five spiders hanging from the ceiling and I wouldn't, it'd be interesting, not but fear a, <clears throat> Another mind exercise for you then. Do you think, well, Let's just go back to that um, situation when it was installed. Mm -hmm. Do you think your dad actually knew that there might have been a moth there? Why did he call you over to the tree? Oh no, he knew there was a moth there. He knew it, that he wanted us to see it. It was a it was a big, big tree moth. Oh, okay. And it was it was it wasn't. Um, he had no intention of it, like hitting me in the face. Right. It was just. He, because it was so well camouflaged, you couldn't actually see it until it moved. So it looked just like the tree, like the bark. So he expected you to be full of awe and wonder. Oh, yeah. That's, um, exactly. Yeah. And instead it turned out to, to be a horrific incident. Yeah. Um, do you think if that situation had happened and for some reason it had been a, a spider dangling down from the tree and the spider had hit, and hit you in the face, do you think you would have had a fear of spiders now? Probably. Yeah. So we're just getting that rationale on board you know, of the conscious mind. Knowing that the, the unconscious and the body is moving you away from this thing or freezing that's one way of hiding you see freezing mm -hmm. thinking that you're not going to be seen or noticed it's still fear 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 but um the rational mind is now saying because your unconscious mind is listening all the time of course to what we're saying mm -hmm. and your body that it could quite easily have been a spider and you've rationalized very well that spiders are more useful than moths and spiders do this and spiders do that but I do guarantee you that if it had been a spider in the tree rather than a moth we'd have been having a conversation now about spiders and how moths are okay mm -hmm. so this is all about an incident when you think about that incident do you see a picture of the incident describe your memory of it to me um yeah it was just we were standing by the tree it was me my brother um my cousin chad are you in the picture um it sometimes i see it through my eyes and sometimes i see it um okay from like a bystander's kind of thing. So you're stepping in, stepping out, stepping in, stepping out. Mm -hmm. We call it being associated or disassociated. When you're associated, you don't see yourself in the picture because you are in the picture. It's like mm -hmm. a movie and you stepped into it and you're experiencing it. And that was a kind of a little test because those people who see themselves running away from something and they don't see it through their own eyes, so to speak, they don't have a phobia. I mean, I know that you do, but I'm just going through these motions so that you know that you do and building up the wanting, the desire to be free from it. Because this really isn't about moths, it's about fear. And if somebody really wanted to tease you or to insult you at some point in the future and they knew about this, they would mm -hmm. use it against you. And if we can be over as much fear as possible and have 
the real fears still rampant and act appropriately when there is something that is going to harm our physical selves then all's good You've got more energy to do something about other stuff so <clears throat> When you think about that picture, where is it in proximity to you? Uh, it's right in front of me. Um, Point. Like there. Okay. Put a. Because I was leaning in, trying to see what my dad wanted me to see. Put a border around it. Big black border around that picture. Yeah. Now tell me, is it moving or still? Still. And is there any sound associated with it? No, just the thunk. So there is a thunk? Yeah, where he hit the tree with the what? stick. For what reason did he hit the tree? He wanted, because none of us could see the moth. Ah. So he wanted to, to make the moth fly away. But he didn't it was... anticipate it would be in your face. No. And you can talk about this quite eloquently, so that's good. Mm -hmm. but as you're thinking about that thunk, is that picture in black and white or colour? Colour. Okay. Can you imagine it being black and white now, drain the colour out of it? Yeah. Okay. Can you imagine it being silent? <clears throat> yeah can you imagine it being like a, a sepia tone because this is an old newsreel isn't it this is something that mm -hmm. happened a long time ago so it's kind of nicotine yellow yeah okay and it's a bit further away now but this, you've still got the black border but it's gone a bit further away mm -hmm. when you think about that now on a scale of naught to ten, where is it now? That idea of a moth. Still pretty high. And is the picture still where it was? Has it come back like a rubber band? No, it's still far away. It just. So it's still got. It's like I can. I can picture what's hap what happens next. Yes, it's the what happens next. It's, it's the anticipatory yeah. dress. Could you imagine it, now keeping your eyes closed, imagine it from your brother's perspective, with your brother seeing you running away. Because your brother would see that it's no longer anywhere near you, but you've gone running off. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And go right to the end, because it's a video, it's not a still shot. Because, as you've quite rightly understood now, the video has run to the end, because you've imagined what would happen next. So mm -hmm. go right to the end of the video, where you know you are safe. You might be exhausted, you might be upset but you know you're you are safe can you go right to the end and describe that to me um i was with my mom yep so i had to go wash my face yeah then i was crying and obviously yeah and then i just sat with my mom and i was so mad at my dad and my brother yeah because my brother was mad at me that I hurt the moth. Okay. And they just they just laughed because it was funny. Yeah. But it wasn't to me. But they didn't know it was. Yeah. Like they had no um, concept that it would be, you know, 45, 50 years later. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Nobody would wish that on somebody even... The worst enemy, never mind a family member, they wouldn't wish that mm -mm. on somebody 
in your family, would you? So they, they're they kind of innocent about it. But there's anger there. Of course there is. There is in every phobia because of the way it was installed. So you're right at the end now and you're with your mum. You've stopped crying. Is she comforting you? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you've stopped crying. She's comforting you. You know you are safe. Mm-hmm. Right. In a moment... You're going to imagine that you're watching this in a cinema. But you see how you've got your um, head supported there on your fist? I mm-hmm. want you to keep that there. Because before we go into the cinema, and of course this is a mind cinema, but you can perhaps perceive the chair that you're going to sit in in the cinema, and the, the scene isn't showing yet, the screen is blank. Might it might even be some curtains in front of the screen. You can decide whether you're going to sit right in front of the screen, right at the back, or even in a kind of higher balcony. You might even be in the projection room, depending on what level of safety you want to experience. Because the scene will appear on the screen, but not yet. And in the cinema, it's all an illusion. It's not real. You know that. Though it can seem very real when we're watching a film, can't it? Where we can feel fully associated with what's Mm -hmm. showing. But you know that you are going to be safe because you will be in the cinema watching a film. Before we do that, keeping your fist where it is, I want you to remember that being hit in the face with a fist is far worse than any tickle you could get from a creature such as that or a spider. I want you to think about a spider and a spider and a butterfly and other creatures that you don't mind emphasis on the word mind The worst that they can do in your country is tickle your face, whereas a punch in the face would be far more impactful. Do you agree? Yes, but I'd still rather be punched in the face. Okay. (laughs) Right. And you're recognising now the difference, which is my Mm -hmm. point. Because at this moment, we haven't done the therapy yet, so of course... Being tickled in the face is worse. No, being punched in the face. No, being tickled in the face is worse than being punched in the face at the moment. Because it depends who's doing the tickling or what's doing the tickling. Of course, but the tickle is what we're dealing with. As uncomfortable as that may be to contemplate, I'm talking to the logical part of Tom that knows his physical apparatus is not going to be torn, dented, skin broken, grazed, bleeding, permeated in any way by a tickle. Would you agree? Grudgingly, but would you agree? Yes. Yes. So this is a perception thing that we're thinking about. And of course, it's real because it was installed long ago and it is what you understand to be a phobia. And the fist on your chin is reminding you that at this moment in time you would rather be punched in the face than tickled. And that is where we're at right now. Though with the fist supporting your head as it is I want you to do that thing that we've spoken about before. I want you to stack up some positives. Think of a time where you've been very confident and that flashcard I've held up about skills and abilities, you really have the skill and ability to deal with a spider. Let's say that somebody else was absolutely terrified, a family member was absolutely terrified of a spider or a snake. You could come on your white charger and get rid of that snake, get rid of that spider. 
Think of the courage, the bravery. You might not even think in those terms, but somebody who is terrified of one of those creatures would perceive you as brave. So recognise now there is a bravery, there is a courage, there is an ability that you might think is just commonplace, it's just a spider. They can't hurt you. I want you to recognise that confidence and that ability now. I want the body to recognise it as you feel the weight of your chin and your head on that fist of yours. The fist symbolising courage. Can you feel the acknowledgement of those skills and abilities that you perhaps haven't thought about before? The courage you have to deal with other creatures. Let's say somebody was terrified of a butterfly. Would you be able to assist them with the butterfly? Possibly. Possibly. But you could with a snake. Mm -hmm. Some people are terrified of snakes. You could with a spider. Mm -hmm. Some people are terrified of spiders. Maybe butterfly is going a little too far at the moment though you will be able to be okay if there was a butterfly outside and it was doing its own thing and it was quite far away from you, am I right? Mm -hmm. So you've got the skill and the ability to deal and be in the presence of, in the peaceful presence of various creatures and particularly um, those creatures that other people might be terrified of, you can exhibit courage bravery, confidence, ability, yes? So you're stacking that up now, you're just feeling that idea of anchoring what you hadn't perhaps acknowledged before, that there is a certain bravery, a certain ability, a certain prowess, a certain confidence in dealing with other creatures. Touching your skin invading your territory you'd be able to deal with them quite ably recognize that now take a deep breath in and feel that ability be proud of yourself i want you to recognize now there are other things in life that you will just allow to be in your presence and you know them to not cause you or anybody else any harm they might not be pretty, but you know, they're just on the planet doing their thing. And again, if they happen to come into close proximity with you, they just don't bother you at all. What other creatures would you be thinking of right now? How about ants, beetles, wasps? Yeah, I'm not a fan of wasps or bees, but I don't really do anything to them, so... So, wasps and bees and other flying creatures, whilst you don't have to like them, they wouldn't make you freeze in the same way. No. Okay. So, recognising now, with that ability, with that um, head of yours on that fist, you recognise that there are lots of flying creatures about that whilst you may not welcome them into proximity with you you certainly have the skills and abilities that's what we're aiming for the skill and the ability the presence of mind to deal with them yes mm -hmm. okay this is what we're dealing with you see because with this other creature that you have an issue with your mind leaves you. You no longer have the presence of mind. And as I've said before, with some people it's cotton wool or buttons. They try and keep away from those for the rest of their lives. With you it just happens to be this one and you understand how it's been installed. Now tell me, what is the funniest music, joke, anything that you can think of right now that makes you giggle, chortle, laugh. It's the funniest thing you can tell me. You can tell yourself.
I don't really know. Did you ever ever have Benny Hill over there? Yeah, Benny Hill was awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When he used to uh, hit the bald little guy on the head. Yeah. Because he was chasing the scantily clad females. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was the best part about Benny Hill. <laughs> Wonderful. We love Benny Hill. Love him, love him here. Okay, so now is the time for I want you to go into the cinema, into the dark cinema, nothing on the screen. Choose your seat and tell me where you sit. Uh, upper balcony. Okay, so in upper balcony, you have a remote control in the arm of your chair. This is your cinema. So you can start, stop, rewind, fast forward, etc, etc. And I want you to put a marker at the place that we've discussed before where you know you are safe. We're not looking at the film yet, but you've got a marker where you know you are safe. Right? I want you to put a marker before the event when you know you are safe. You have an expectation. You're going to perhaps see something wonderful. You're not really sure. Your dad's called you over. You know you are safe. Yes? Mm. Okay. So we've got two markers on this video. In a moment, you're going to start the video at the end. And you might be too young to know this, but those Super 8 films long ago, when people used to take cine film, when you rewind it, it was showing backwards, upside down, and looked quite funny. Have you ever seen that Super 8 film? Where it's like mm -hmm. <laughs> so when it was rewound, you'd see the people upside down, and it would be going at twice speed or faster than that even so when the video opens it's going to be at the end when you know you are safe and it's going to run backwards upside down in black and white until you get to the beginning when you know you are safe do you get it do you understand what i mean mm -hmm. So I need you to nod your head when we are back at the beginning. And we're going to, first of all, I've got control of the remote. And I'm going to press play. And when I do, the curtains will open or the screen will come on. And remember, it's going to be black and white. It's going to be upside down. So you're going to kind of have to tilt your head a little bit if you want to see what's happening. It's going to be upside down and it's going to start at the end. And it's going to be at least twice speed. And I want you to nod your head when we're at the beginning. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's going to begin now. <laughs> Okay, good. Stop. Right, I'm going to fast forward in the blink of an eye so we're back at the end. We're back at the end and we're going to do it again. So, it begins now. <laughs> Hit the beginning yet? Yes, good. Okay, right. Keeping your eyes closed, recognize now that it is different. Are you okay now for me to fast forward to the end and this time for you to see it the right way up even though it will be at twice speed at least again? 
Are you okay? Okay, let's do it then. Remember to nod when you're at the beginning. So it's going to go backwards, at least at double speed, in black and white, but you will be upright. So you'll see yourself running backwards. You'll see yourself... You see yourself, all the sounds will be associated with it as well. So it begins now. Well done. Good. Okay. This time, as bizarre as it might sound, you're a young boy. You're going to see and add in your mind some scantily clad females and Benny Hill and the little bald man <laughs> being slapped on the head at the same time as you running backwards. That's going to begin, remember to nod your head when you're at the beginning, that is going to begin now. <laughs> well done. Okay, good. So they're frightened of, of wasps but you're okay with wasps. They're frightened of wasps. Another one is frightened of snakes. There's going to be wasps, there's going to be snakes, and there's going to be spiders. The bigger the better. And Benny Hill is going to be chasing around, trying to get rid of all of these things for you. He's there to help you, and it's going to happen again. And we're going to start at the end. And this time it's going to be in colour. Oh, it's going to be in colour. So you can actually pick the colour of the bikinis or the colour of the underwear of the models. You can make it much more vibrant, much more funny for you. Everybody's going to be racing around. It's all going to be twice speed or more. And it's going to have all that energy and that's going to begin. Remember to nod when you get to the beginning and that's going to begin now. <laughs> Well done. Okay, good. Now, now is the big one. Now, we're going to go from the beginning. Oh, yes, we are. But it's going to be triple speed, at least. Triple speed. We're going to start at the beginning when you know you are safe, when you've just heard your dad call. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen over there. Oh, right at the beginning and you're going to get to back to the end to that marker when you know you're safe but you're going to have Benny Hill and you're going to have all these scantily clad females as well in their different coloured bikinis and everybody's going to be racing around and there's going to be wasps and there's going to be spiders and there's going to be snakes and there's going to be you and it's all going to be very interesting and I want you to nod when you get to the end and it begins now <laughs> Well done. Very good. Very good. And let's go back to the beginning. Right back to the beginning now. And it's going to begin again. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Oh, one woman's lost the bikini. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Let's go back to the beginning. Oh, she's terrified because the snake's going to get her and the wasps are buzzing around and there's tits flying everywhere and he's all... Ah! Yeah. <sighs> okay, this time it's going to be a little bit slow. It's just going to be twice speed and you're going to be able to keep track of people. You're going to be all caught up in the boobs flying everywhere and in the little man being slapped on the head and Benny Hill not knowing what's going on, not knowing whether to get the snake off the woman or to wasp, wasp, waft the wasp away or to help you with your blooming whatever it is flying in your face that your dad didn't even know what was going to happen. That's going to begin now. <laughs> Are we at the end yet? Yes, okay. This time, whew, feeling a bit braver now, you're going to come out of that seat and go and sit in the stalls. You can choose where in the stalls you're going to sit, whether it's at the front, the middle or the back. Where are you going to sit? The front. The front. And you've got the remote control now. So what I need you to do is for you to nod when you're at the beginning 
and nod when you're at the end. This time it's going to be in real time. In real time, you are in real time, everybody else is going to be double speed because your dad doesn't know what the hell's going to happen, your brother doesn't know what the hell's going to happen, you're going to just be caught up in all of that frenzy. Just nod your head when it starts, nod your head when it finishes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Whew. Right. Now, keeping your eyes closed, I want you to let me know on a scale of 0 to 10 where you think that fear is right now. Um, one. Okay. Any more work to do, do you think? How about doing it in slow motion? Uh, I never even saw the moth, to be honest with you. Okay, well, let's do it now. Perhaps it's got to be in slow motion so that you can actually see the moth fly. Roar! You running. Your brother laughing. <laughs> Your dad. I didn't know that was going to happen. Your mom, my child, my child. Who knows? You do. Use your imagination. It's your imagination that started this in the first place. Because that incident is over. It's done. You're all grown up now. So go to the beginning. And this time, it's in slow motion. But it's still funny. Not when you start the film. And at the end. Okay? <laughs> ah, reverse back to the beginning and this time you're going to see it feel it hear it, touch it, smell it as it was or as you think it was and you are going to be tickled tickled by something much smaller than you something that is different to every other creature though you are now 50 odd years old not a little boy anymore and you're going to have all those characters flying about Benny Hill the little bold man <coughs> slaps on the head boobies everywhere Ow! and all that stuff happening and that's gonna happen now not when it starts not when it ends yeah okay right keeping your eyes closed where on the scale of naught to ten is that old unuseful fear zero okay so now we're going to future pace now that your body has remembered that you are so old now you like that man that thankfully you got all your hair but you could be slapped on the head by Ben Hill that you now are older and wiser, you're not a little boy anymore and the worst that can happen to you is that you are tickled on the face. A moment ago you said you'd rather be punched on the face and this time you're going to be tickled, you're going to be tickled on the face and it's going to seem funny to you that you're such a big strong grown-up that this 
tiny little moth because it was and because she was smaller you imagine it's so much bigger and yes okay it's a big moth but it's still a tickle isn't it and you're going to imagine it now happening to you all grown up and now that begins now and I want you to nod when you get to the end yeah okay right open your eyes tell me about moths they're gross mm-hmm They fly funny. <laughs> yeah. They do. That's why, that's why like, butterflies are pretty and they fly. They're like, elegant. Yeah. Because yeah, they're lighter. Moths are just, they're just drunk. Yeah. They don't, you don't, like, a, you can somewhat predict kind of what a butterfly is going to go from this flower to that flower. Yes. Where a moth is going to uh, go from this light to your face to the other light. It's just they're, like they're drunk. And they're they don't. stupid, aren't they? Because they just go, yeah. they're going to be killed when they go to the light. They're, especially those zappers, which mm. is how we can get them. Because they're going to get that. The light actually destroys them. They're not built for it. They're mm -hmm. creatures of the night. They're creatures of the night. They're so stupid. Got tiny, tiny little brains. And all they can do is flap about. So, Try, in vain, to get that fear back up to a seven. What can you do right now to get that freeze response back? Talk about a situation where you might encounter one in real life. Just walking up the front door where the two lights are. Okay. So imagine doing that now. I can't really. That's good then, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what you've done is re-educate your body and made that situation grow up. Did you see yourself as a 50-year-old guy in the scene? Mm -hmm. And did you sense the Moth flying in your face, stupid little creature. Well, no, because I was bigger, so it hit me in the stomach. I would hit you in the stomach. So it didn't hit me in the face because I'm, I oh, wasn't this, I wasn't this tall when I was seven. Yeah. So you were tickled so, in the stomach, tickle, tickle, tickle. Yeah, it didn't. Tickle. It wasn't as traumatic because it yeah. didn't put all that powdery crap in my face. Yeah. So you're all grown up, and so it's just your stomach. Yeah. Okay. I get that. I get that. Mm. And they don't usually come at your face, you know that, don't you? They go for the light. Yeah, it's just because, well, it didn't, mm. the, it's really not the moth's fault. Yes, true. Because it was just being a moth. So do you think you might allow them to share the planet with you, even though not in close proximity with you? Maybe begrudgingly? Begrudgingly, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff we don't like, but we're not going to need them eradicated because that's the fear talking being as the fear isn't there anymore they're not going to do anything to you except give you a tickle in the tummy if you happen to be whacking a tree to frighten them to death and they go ah got no idea where they're going have they the stupid creatures where's the light where's the light i was asleep what the hell's happening so maybe you're fixed maybe your body has learned that it's all grown up now. Maybe, Maybe it's going to be different. You don't have to like them, but it's about getting rid of the fear. You can mm -hmm. save your fear for stuff that really does need your fight or flight response. You've got no need for freeze. There's no use to man or boy, is it? Freeze. No. No. So we'll do the fight or flight with stuff that's really worthy of being frightened about because then you can have all that adrenaline to actually help you do that fighting okay i think we're done i think we um 
Is there anything else? No, I think that's good for today. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so, nice to see you as always. Nice to see you as well. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. Okay. The, the, my one regret is I had to have my eyes closed the whole time you're doing the Benny Hill. <laughs> I should so, have recorded it for you, shouldn't I? Yes, you should have. That would have been epic. Oh dear. I'm just glad. Thank God you'd seen Benny Hill because oh, yes. he's my go to. He really is. Yeah. <laughs> and if yeah. you ever do that with somebody that doesn't know Benny Hill, then they'll lock me up because it's just so bizarre. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I did the laughing okay. policeman a couple of times, but that gets so exhausting. I'd rather do Benny Hill. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, Jenny. Bye bye then. Have a good day. Bye bye. You too.